like God is fighting for us. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Dove Church. We're glad to be here in this Christmas season and how good the Lord has been to us this weekend. We just praise God for what he's doing and how he's doing it and we trust him in all things. We bless you for looking in on us and we bless those that are in the house today and how God is just blessing and we get your comments and we get your offerings and we thank God for that. And, and we are just glad to come before you today. We have a sure word from the Lord for you. And we're ready to, to deliver it. Amen. 
And so everybody with your Bibles in your hand, and let's make our confession. Or if it's on your phone, your pad. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your direction. We thank you that the entrance of your word not only brings life, but it brings light. And God, now we pray that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And they all said, Amen. 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 We're talking from the subject, how do you spell relief? E M M A N U E L. How do you spell relief? Emmanuel. How do you spell relief? Emmanuel. One of the most powerful names in Scripture is Emmanuel. And it's not only a name, but it's a descriptive explanation of something that would happen to us. The name itself means God with us. I'm going to give you a lot of familiar stuff, but it's going to take a different path today, a little bit different path. Sometimes we need to understand how we get stuff and where it came from. The name is mentioned, Emmanuel is only mentioned three times in Scripture. Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 8, 8. And then in Matthew's Gospel. It speaks about it. This name was given in the midst of a culture who thought it disrespectful to even say God. In the ancient text, whenever they needed to say God, they, they mentioned a descriptive name, something else, other than God itself. And they would block out certain letters. And, and even the ancient scribes and Pharisees, instead of saying it, they would, they would, they would put an arrow there, a hand with a pointer, and lay it next to the place where God is mentioned. Because they thought God was so far away from us that you couldn't even mention God. So the fact that the name Emmanuel shows up in Isaiah is a mind-blowing thing. The idea that God is with us is a concept that blows their mind. God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, it blew their mind. But they didn't know it was blown until later on. God with us. 
Could it be sometimes when you get something like a new name, could it be if we thought about what God said when he said it, we would say something else? The problem I have with us, and, 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 and they had in that day, is that God would say something, and then when it showed up, they were saying something else for so long till they didn't believe what God said when he said it. Sometimes we need to capture it when God said it, not try to rework it. What did it say? What did the Bible say? Why are we trying to work it and filter it through all of our stuff instead of just purely taking it for what it is? Emmanuel, God with us. <gasps> I, got to, I got to get with that concept. So sometimes God has to cut through your culture to deliver his message to you. And the culture that he dropped you in was to help you get to know him better. But because you got into the ritual and religion of it, you forgot that God was in the middle of it. Sometimes you can, you can miss God for church. You in church and you miss God. You, 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 you in church and you miss the move of the Holy Spirit because you don't know the difference. You think hype is the Holy Spirit. You think a musical uh, 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 beat is, 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 is the Holy Spirit. It's an enhancement to something that's already operating that gives witness to your spirit that the Lord is moving with you. But it isn't it by itself. See, sometimes we, it, it, we, you know what? I just look, I say they don't even know if it's legitimate or not. Did the Holy Ghost move? Yeah, how do you know? Oh, oh, we just we we jumped through the windows today. What well, did you get delivered? Did you get free? Was well, there edification? Did the Lord change something? Did He change you? Oh God, my God! In the book of Isaiah, we see. How, how, how God established the name Emmanuel in the earth. Here is the problem and the dilemma. It started in a different type of situation. But you're going to see how God operates. God always does something wild when it's to get his will into the earth a certain way. To, to, to have a virgin give birth to a son is wild. It's against culture. It's the stuff that gossip is made of. Come on. We, we got comfortable with the idea because we've heard it over and over again. But when it happens, you know, you're the town talk. Mary's pregnant by God. How will that read in the news? Here is the problem and the dilemma. Isaiah 7, 1 through 7. We're going to run through this. We've got a number of scripture to give to you because we got to paint this picture. Isaiah 7 and 1 through 7. And this is a, a funny situation, an, an unlikely situation, where God uh, uh, drops the name Emmanuel in. Amen. When you have a say amen. Now, we were just in Isaiah 43 for our reading. <laughs> Would y'all get there right now? <laughs> now, if you're there, say amen. amen. Does it start out with now? And, and let's, here comes this reading. Now it came to pass, that means it happened, and I'll be reading with emphasis. When pastor jumps in and out, that's what I'm doing. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz. Everybody say Ahaz. Ahaz. The son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, 
king of Judah, that risen king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to make war against it, it being Judah, but could not prevail against it. And it was told to the house of David, saying, Syria's forces are deployed in Ephraim. So his heart, whose heart? Ahaz's heart. And the heart of his people were moved as the trees of the woods are moved with the wind. That means they were shaken in fear. You, 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 you with me so far? Then the Lord said to Isaiah, the man of God, the prophet, go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Shear Jashub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field and say to him, I, I want to stop right there because when God gives direction, although sometimes we say he doesn't give us every piece of direction, sometimes he does. Go to the end of the, full, the pool by the fuller's uh, 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 part. And, and, and everybody in that day knew where that was. That's just like say, go downtown by the Coleman Young building or either the city county building. You know where that is. Down Woodward. Amen. Amen. At the corner of Jefferson. How many of you know where that is? I start to say, how many of you been to court there? But that's not a good question. And say to him, who is he talking about? Ahaz. Take heed and be quiet. Y'all underline that and put that in your, your notes. <laughs> Take heed and be quiet. Some things don't need your dialogue over. <laughs> when he said, take heed, I want you to listen to me talk now. And you be quiet. Sometimes you need to listen to the Lord talk and you be quiet. Take heed and be quiet. Everything don't need your commentary. Ooh. Then he goes on to tell him what he needs to tell him. Now, this is Isaiah. Do not fear or be faint-hearted. Y'all get up and don't fall out. For these two stubs of smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin and Sirah and the son of Ramalia, the, the, Isaiah said, they ain't nothing but smoking pieces of burning up wood. And you shaking like the trees in the wind. Over something that's burning up. Sometimes you're afraid of something that's already being destroyed. <laughs> you scared of something that's too sick to hurt you. Oh my God. <laughs> Ephraim and the sons of Ramalia have plotted evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and trouble it, and, and let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves, and, and, and set a king over them, the son of Tabal. Thus says the Lord God, It shall not stand. Somebody ought to holler, Amen. amen. When you get in trouble, I want you to read about these firebrands in Scripture that were already burning up. And know that the final word is, is that it shall not stand. Nor shall it come to pass. Come on. That's like, like saying, it won't happen, it won't happen. It won't stand, it won't come to pass. It won't happen, it won't happen. Turn to somebody and point to them and say, it won't happen. Tell them again. Is that good to anybody but me? Now let's back up and, 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 and break it apart and deal with it. Ahaz was the king of Judah. At this time, the United Kingdom 
was divided into two factions. Judah was one kingdom and Israel was the other. And they were always warring with each other. And if you check history, on both sides they had kings. And Ahaz, at this point, he started out pretty good. When Isaiah came to talk to him, he was, he was good. But after that, he fell into idolatry. Unlike his father, Jotham, who was a righteous king. Idolatry meaning that every, every new thing came along, he wanted it. When I read some, some, some history on, 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 on Ahaz, he, he went to another country and he saw a beautiful altar that was done, de dedicated to an idol. And when he got back home, he told the priest I want, and brought them the plans and said, I want you to make me an altar just like this. Be careful what you pick up in them foreign lands and from strange people. And worse still, don't bring, bring the plans back and say, I want one of them. I didn't even get an amen there. I need an ink pen so I can write an amen down. So when I need one, I can just, just see it. Amen. Sometimes something that doesn't seem to make sense can come and keep you and save you. It is because God sees into the future. And sometimes God gives you what is known as a double coupon day. It's a twofer. It handles something right now, but you get something for later. Ooh. I was, I was a, 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 I took Pastor out for a birthday, and so we, you know, I, I heard that the restaurant I was going to was having a special. If you spend X amount of money, they would give you a, 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 a extra bonus. Uh, gift card or coupon that uh, it, and, and 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 I went because I said oh I can use all of them that night <laughs> see I'm transparent enough to tell on me so y'all won't tell it y'all just tell the good end and keep the nasties back. I walked up to the counter, come waltzing up, and another guy was standing there. I just bought some of those, too. I said, yeah. I said, boy, I'm going to get a chance to, to get extra this and extra that when we, when we go to dinner. Because dinner was going to be the next day. It was that Wednesday. And we went out Thursday on a birthday. And I said, I said oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I was just dreaming of, you know, I said, oh, I'll be able to get get my, my this, my that, you know, and I'll have a little extra, get, feed her and get me a treat, you know. Uh. <laughs> and you know what, I walked to the counter, I said, I'd like that, that special gift certificate you have that you get the, you know, the, the other uh, uh, gift certificate with it. And she said, yeah, and she took my money just as good, she said. And when she brought it back, all packaged up real cute and pretty. It, it was a nice place and stuff. It was so, and she brought it back. She said, now this is, is good anytime, but this one right here, the, the, the smaller one, is not good until January. <laughs> And that other man was still standing there. I said, what? I, she said, you can't use it until. I 
could use that story. It's funny how stories in your life come up. And, 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 but, but here's the thing. I could use one part of it, well, but one part of it was for the future. Sometimes when God gives a prophetic word, it handles the situation now, and then another part of it is for the future. This is what we have in the name Emmanuel. Ahaz was, was be, get, being threatened for attack. And so God sent his man to tell him, don't worry, it's all right. They nothing but two smoking sticks that are about burned up. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Say it again. Here comes the remedy. This is when God drops the name in. Isaiah 7, 10 through 14. You don't have to flip far. Just go down. Are you at moreover? Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz. Saying, now when God asks you to do something, don't be foolish. Saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. That means ask with everything in you. Sometimes you don't ask with the deepness in you. Ask with your whole being. God, I need for you to do. Ask touching your belief and your faith. Ask it. That's good. But here come the but. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. <laughs> it's the same thing over in Malachi. Try me and see, won't I? And you won't try him. But you love the Lord and you love the word, but you won't try him. When he dared you to trust me, to see won't I, the one who has never broken a promise, see won't I. And you trust in something that has failed too many times to count. I will not ask. Then he gets religious. Nor will I test the Lord. Capital L-O-R-D. Then he said. Hear now, O house of David. It is a small thing for you to weary men. But will you weary my God also? That's Isaiah talking to him. He said, will you weary God with undue religion and humility? I cannot ask him. He's, he's the Lord. Get off of yourself. Ask him because he says ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try him because he says try. Don't filter it through a thing. Especially don't filter the word of God through your need. But he already knows your situation. My mother-in-law had a singing. She always said, don't ask anybody something they already know. Amen. And don't tell them something they already know. I need that. Where my amen? Oh, yeah. amen. But will you weary my God also? Isaiah telling him. Therefore, the, here is when stuff switches. Therefore, the Lord himself 
will give you a sign. Even though you won't ask for it, I'm going to give you one. Isn't it, God, isn't it like God to overlook you, to help you? Amen. How many of us has he overlooked and helped anyway? Amen. In the midst of our craziness, he still helps. <laughs> the Lord himself will give you a sign. He said, now look at this. Behold the, it's only going to be one of them. Virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name. Emmanuel. What is it? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And I said, Lord, you said a virgin going to conceive and call his name. And that's because I read the Bible. I, I know that that's 700 years away that, that Mary conceives and has a baby. But you dropped it in Isaiah 700 years earlier in a situation with a king and two adversaries that were coming against him. So that's when you have to ask a question to the test. What's going on? Well, what happened is a child was born in Ahaz's house after Isaiah gave this prophecy and they named him Emmanuel. God with us. This was a sign to the king when he saw that. After saying, I'm not going to ask for a sign, I'm a... God gave him a sign, he gave him a word, and then this kid was born, and they named him Emmanuel. Where did that name get dropped in there? It didn't say Ahaz named him Emmanuel. His parents named him Emmanuel, and he was in the king's court. The name meant then, as forever, God with us. And in that situation, it meant that trust the Lord because God is going to be with you. And that came against everything in their culture about no touching, no mentioning, no what. How would God be with to deliver us? So we could stay here. So it would come to pass. Whew. Never mind that God does not waste time. When he said it there, he was setting it up for a greater thing. It was for the future. But it handled the situation right then. And some things God will do with you will handle the situation now and set the future. Nothing is lost. That's why you have to watch everything you do. That's why the decision you make today will affect the generation after you. Oh, I did it by myself. I'm my own person. Shut up. Everything you do affects somebody else. In your selfishness, you do it. And then it blows up, and that's when you say, help everybody. Well, everybody wasn't there. You know, it would be funny if people start saying, I wasn't there. I wasn't in there. So <laughs> That would stop you. Because when you get challenged on it, I'm, I'm grown. Get bold enough to say, be grown enough to handle it now. Yeah, you was grown enough to do it. Uh, handle it. <laughs> there was only one Savior, it was Jesus. The rest of y'all need to come down off the cross. Oh boy, I know where that came from. Here, here, let me put that. When did 
did this whole thing change? It, it, it changed after 700 years. John would write these words. John 1, 1 and 2, and then John 1 and 14. And it started establishing how God is intersecting things to get his will into the earth for, re, for his redemptive plan. Emmanuel was a redemptive name. And it was really showing how God was getting ready to do what he was going to do. And it said there, in the beginning was the word. And the word was, was with God. Who was that word? Jesus. And the word was God. Jesus is God. He was in the beginning with who? Then verse 14 says this. You don't see the word Emmanuel but it's there. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. So here comes Emmanuel. God with us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The very idea that God would be with us, not just in spirit, but in the flesh. This means that through Mary, God made a container for himself. He was God outside and he became God in the womb. But he needed Mary because bodies are only legal on the earth. You are legal on the earth because you got a body. <laughs> Charles Cap calls it your earth suit. Unless some of you leave out of here and go into heaven every day and you don't have to breathe. You don't need you. You just lay your body down and you, you picked it up to come to church today. Some of y'all can't do that because you'll forget where you laid it. <laughs> this man grew from a child to an adult, 33 years. The question is why? To be our savior, he had to come close enough to be tempted like us. Ooh, he needed a body. God with us. Matthew, did you understand? He was God. John, did you understand? You, you touched God. You ate with God. You fished with God. Peter, did you understand that you walked on the water with God? Y'all you, you don't understand what I'm talking about today. Whew. Lazarus, did you understand the man that called you out the grave was God? In the earth? The Emmanuel of Isaiah? Do you realize who he was? You read it. But did you know him in his container? He's with us. My God. Philippians 2, 6 through 8. And, and I'm going to read this to you. It's from the Passion Translation. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. God loved us enough, the one that's all about expansion and multiplication and never-ending creativity and change says he walked backward in his own stuff and reduced himself. 
to become a lowly servant, do you realize God had to step back in his godness? No, y'all not kidding it. What did he do it for? So somebody that had a body like the one he had would know that they could be redeemed. He had to be touchable. Cried together. He wept. He ate. He took baths. He got mad. But he healed, set free, rebuked demons. He also had to come to let Satan know who the authority was. If I can walk up, I can walk back. And Jesus, in the form of Emmanuel, named Jesus. They didn't name him Emmanuel, but that was his descriptive designation, God with us, Jesus. In essence, God will walk backward to redeem what he loves. Are y'all out there? How much does he love me? That he'll reduce himself to the form of somebody that will wash your feet. Spit on the ground and make a mud pie and put it in your eyes and create you a new eyebrow, eyeball. He, he, he loves you that much. I'm glad for his reduction. Are y'all out there? And then it said, he became human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable. When they, when they beat him, he bled. When they hit him, he felt it. Choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. Who was he obedient to the father? He only did in the earth what he heard the father say do. Or what he heard the father do. He was obedient. Can we get obedient in our flesh? He was a perfect example even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. And that's the TPT. Hebrews 4.15. Anybody getting blessed yet? Let's talk about what we don't have. I know this is taking some time, but we've got to piece this story together so you, when you hear Emmanuel, you will hear it new. If you're at Hebrew, say amen. amen. And it said, therefore, we do not have a high priest, Jesus' current status. This is my explanation and emphasis. Who cannot empathize or sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Everybody say, yet without sin. Yeah. So anything you go through or anything you were tempted with, don't act like you're in isolation. He was tempted with it too. He got tested with it too. Satan brought it to him too. He messed with him too. Anytime you're fasting, you don't want anybody to mess with you. You're already hungry. Have you ever tried to mess with a dog and, and they were eating out of their bowl? Do you see teeth mark in your hand? Not good. Seven hundred years later, Jesus shows up as a baby, God with us. So everything He told them then, 
It happened in that situation. And then it happened now. It happened now. Do you understand how I said that? So when God tells you something, even though it has not happened, it's going to. Just wait on it. Jesus came to relieve us of the oppression of the evil one. As we could live in relationship with God forever. Jesus came to restore us back to what Adam and Eve had originally in the garden. Unhindered relationship with God. That's what he came. To put us back. Galatians 4, 4 through 5. And it says there, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. I like the phrase fullness because it means that just at the God-appointed moment, he sent relief into the world. How do you spell relief? I want to tell you that an expanded definition of how way to spell relief is J-E-S-U-S. He came to relieve you. Of sin that will separate you from God. He came to relieve you. Of all the stuff that the enemy wants to throw your way. He came to relieve you. You have relief today because God is with you. Well, he's gone. He's gone. So Jesus died on the cross. But I love how God is still with us through it all. I have three. Can I give you three more scriptures and I'll be done? I promise I'll be done. I'm going to give you three more. Because we got to make the whole cycle back right. So, so he left to go be with the Father. But before he left, John 14 and 16 says something. Ah. You there? I need about three or more of you to say amen. amen. Does it say, and I will? 14 and 16? And I will, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may what? However, forever. how long? Forever. That he may abide with you forever. God with us, Emmanuel. Amen. John 15, 26, next chapter over. In John 14, he said, you praying for the helper. He said, but, and then he goes on to say, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. The helper can come to help you know it's Jesus who's doing it. He will testify of who? Woo! God with us. Emmanuel. Last one. Acts 2 and 1. Acts 2 and 1. We ready? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, daybreak. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, 
there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The comforter was come, and it testified of Jesus. Relief is here. Emmanuel. God with us. And he's not just with us. He's alive in us. Blessings to you today. Anybody have him alive in you? Lift him hands and begin to worship. Just thank him. Call any one of those names. Thank you for being with you. <laughs> Wonderful Father. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Your Holy Ghost is God with us. Come on, come on, come on, people, press in. It's called message today God loves you today give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ you can get into the kingdom today and receive this Emmanuel this Jesus this God with us and as simple as this confession Father in Jesus name I repent of sin and I give you my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today I believe in a miracle. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. On that third day morning. And on that confession I am saved. Thank you for coming into my heart. Being my Lord and being my Savior. If you made that confession. Find a good Bible-believing, teaching church, worshiping church that teaches you the full counsel of God, what His Word says about it. We're located at 4660 Military at the corner of Horatio, Southwest Detroit, at Liberty and Orange and Michigan Avenue on the bigger cross streets. Look us up. GPS us, whatever way. Find us, we'll be glad to have you. And until we bless to come together again, blessings to you today. The Lord keep you. Everybody, keep worshiping. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.